So I've been sent the Chiggy A O I A no A I O A I O I. I've been sent the Chiggy A I O. I forget what it's called now. I've been sent this. Don't normally do this kind of thing, but I thought it's a great Farkler's delight. This thing to actually fit to your bike. So this thing is a challenging name, but a great device. I think they could have come up with a better name for it. We'll get there later. Um, so the features of this thing, so this has got basically an additional dashboard for your, your bike. And it's got twin dash cams on it. It's got blind spot monitoring. It's got movement detection when you're parked up. It's got tire pressure management systems. It's got an OBD connection, which is optional, which can pass things like engine temperatures to the dashboard. It's got GPS on it for speed and location data, which you can overlay on the videos. It's got remote control, which you can fit to the remote handlebar, which is quite handy. It's got a wheel controller you can actually add into the um, CAN bus system if you've got a BMW, which means you can run it off the standard jog controller that's already on the bike. Uh, it's got CarPlay, that's one of its major features in Android Auto, so you can actually use all of the features of CarPlay on it, such as all the music stuff, all of the sat-nav stuff like Waze. My Route app is brilliant if you want to do away with um, your Garmin and just have a sort of waypoint navigation on there because that's a good backup for bike users. Pretty tough, doesn't appear to have an official IP rating, but it's definitely marked as waterproof and dustproof. It looks it, it looks as good a quality as the Garmin Zumo XT, which I've got mounted above it. Cabling is um, designed to be permanently installed, so this thing is not clip on and clip off your bike like a sat nav. Again, we'll come onto that in a little bit. Um, so, installation this thing's a Farkler's delight. It's got long wires on it, it's suitable for all bikes but a bit of a headache, I must say, to hide away all of the excess wiring. And unless you're gonna get slightly dangerous with it and clip it all to size and uh, be cutting all the wires, you do have to find someone on the bike to stash the excess cable in. It's got good fixings, including a rubberized final mount, which manages the vibrations on it. It's, it's pretty subtle, the rubber mount, but it does work really well. Tip for you, fit the SD card before you fit it to the bike. Uh, it's a bit of a pain otherwise. Um, it's got a USB connection on it, but I haven't really found out what that's for yet because it doesn't appear to, um, power the device and it also doesn't appear to allow you to pull data off it but I may be wrong we're still working on beta firmware at the moment another quick tip for you the dash cam fixings they have 3m pads to fit them to wherever you want to fit them something I found historically heat those pads before you stick them down just with a hairdryer or something just to make them slightly warm because it, it adheres so much better or when it's cold there is a risk they're going to peel off the remote control is great it's got a few options on it you can see where I've mounted mine it's in reach of the handlebar dead easy just sits underneath Again, pretty easy to fix that, and it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to fix to pretty much any bike. This thing's not designed to be removable, as I've mentioned. You'd need a Torx bit to steal it, and also have to clip off all the wires if they are bundled under the tank. So, not a theft for an opportunist. It's probably just as safe as a standard TFT screen on there, which is similar. It's just a couple of um, screws if you wanted to clip that off. So, the camera mounts themselves, I've used the adhesive mounting on the back one, because there's a nice place to mount that on the R9T. Um, which doesn't really interfere or anything that sits there quite nicely. On the front, I would have had to hang it underneath. I'm, I'm not really too uh, confident that a 3M pad would hold well under there when it's going to get battered. Um, and there's not really a smooth, flat surface on the front of the R19 that I've got at all. So what I've done is I've adapted a GoPro mount around the indicator. Now, just one thing on that, it looks like it's a GoPro, GoPro compatible mount, but it actually isn't. It's slightly off on the measurements, but I have managed to adapt it pretty easily, which is just by sanding it and then you have to widen the hole slightly um, do that very carefully don't just jam the mounting screw through because you'll crack it just drill it out very slightly and what you'll find is it'll um, it'll set up quite nicely um, and you can see it's mounted on my bike it's nice and robust now so the GPS aerial that's I think that's one of the things where probably the next iteration of this I'll hopefully build the GPS into the actual device because at the moment it's cabled separately to a small receiver and so it does mean you've got that separate GPS mounting somewhere so in all you've got quite a lot of cabling to go you've got the front dash cam the rear dash cam the GPS settings and then the power and the switch light another tip for you if you're testing the machine so test it before you put it on just to make sure it's working properly you just twist the switch live and the live together into as one wire and attach that to the positive you'll be you'll then be able to test it as if it was all switched I've, I've actually left mine permanently twisted together because I've wired it into the GPS connection for the sat nav on my R90 uh, which is handy for me it means I'd have to worry about finding the switch live because that sat nav is already wired to the bike it does mean I lose the functionality of it recording if someone 
knocks the bike around when it's um, stationary and parked. But I've then got the positive side of I know there's zero drain on the battery when I'm not using it. Chigi, Chigi, however you pronounce that. I've seen their installation video, um, just a couple of bits on that for me. I would say don't stick the camera right in front of the rear brake light that they have because you won't be able to see the brake light if you're behind, it's going to block it. I've actually put mine just above the brake light so you can still see a full view of the brake light. I prefer a mechanical mount, I've already said that, particularly for the, um, the dash cam on the front because if that thing comes loose you know who knows where it's going to end up and get chewed up by the wheels if it does come free so the setup on the machine absolutely dead easy i would run the software update straight away i've had three software updates just since i've installed it i appreciate it's early days in this device but all three of them have been pretty solid updates it worked well when i first got it apart from the tire pressure management system it didn't register probably the update fixed that straight away tire pressure management is system fitting is absolutely simple you just um, press the pair button screw the first one on when it registers you then pair the second one in on the rear literally just work through each feature in turn to set it up as you like plenty of options on there around data overlays and dash cams and what you want showing on the screen etc so it's good it's good it's a good system for that in daily use it's really simple to use. Um, CarPlay is exactly the same as in the car. Um, on this one you stay Bluetooth to your phone with your helmet, not the device, which is in my view a good thing because then you're using the phone directly to your helmet and the CarPlay is just registering it. Standard dash on it is, is very functional. It's, yeah, it's more accurate than your Speedo. Um, seems pretty consistent on a sat nav which I had running at the same time. You've got other data on there as well so you've always got your tyre pressures sat there in front of you. Your dash cam view is possibly useful. You could use it as a rear view mirror if you wanted. Where I've got mine is a bit low so I'm not really using it as a rear view. I'm using it to actually record front and rear views as I go. The footage out of it is pretty good quality. It's got um, vibration compensation on it on the footage. It gives a pretty good view as you can see from what's playing. You've got the option on it to either record front and rear in 1080p separately or it will overlay it into one video. Don't see the value in that quite so much because you're downgrading the quality of what comes out of both videos to see that. One's big, one's small. Easy to download the footage. I would use the app rather than the SD card. It's an absolute pain to be pulling the SD card out every time with a little talks bit. The app's really easy. Um, you literally just log in. It tells you to create the hotspot on, on the actual device. You log into that hotspot with your phone, click the download button, choose the ones you want and down it comes. So this does take a little bit of time to do that though. So if your bike is is actually sat there running you're probably going to want to put it into a charger it's pretty quick on the downloading the footage i think i've downloaded um, about 10 gig or so in about 10 minutes one criticism i do have of it and it might just be a firmware issue at the moment it um, doesn't work very well with winter gloves works absolutely fine with your fingers works absolutely fine with summer gloves and um, the winter gloves are a little bit less responsive so it could just be a firmware tweak to adjust the sensitivity of the actual um, machine. Downside of it, it's, it's not easily removable from the bike. That's, I suppose you can see that positive or a negative. I mean you can't just clip it off like you would a sat nav to prevent it being stolen if you're parking it somewhere for a long time. But at the same time it then means it is a, you treat it as a permanent installation. GPS is separate to the main unit. That feels a little bit unnecessary, I've kind of mentioned that already and there are an awful lot of wires to tuck away. Again, it's not rocket science to find somewhere to zip tie them all underneath the bike. So in summary, it's I'd say it's a, it's a great device. It's multifunctional. It fills a gap, particularly for the cheaper older motorbikes and adds in features you can move from bike to bike. Um, the dual dash cam function is great for insurance and trip recording as well. So I should just leave it recording all day if there's a particular thing I need to go back and pull. I know I've got it there ready to go without having to um, rely on the fact I spotted it in advance and got the old action cam running. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments. I will get Dave's view some point on this. It's probably going to be yet another device he has to then go off and purchase. And just to be clear, so they did send it to me for nothing, but I can say whatever I want about the device. So I've given you the upsides and the downsides in my view. Overall, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. It's a great little device.